Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Today we're going to kick back, relax, and take it easy, bros and broettes, as we talk about the possible interactions between peptides and THC, the ubiquitously inhaled cannabinoid that seems to either induce relaxation in some or does the complete opposite in others. So this video isn't just for those who engage in some doobie sparking activities, but it's also for those who are curious as to what interactions weed has with growth hormone and the peptides we spend so much time talking about. And some of the research actually includes peptides. So what a fun discussion we've got planned out today. But before we go any further, if you haven't already, just hit that subscribe button as we continue this magic dragon ride through the world of peptide research. We're not going to dissect all the research done on marijuana as there are like a million other channels that do this, but we'll give a brief overview. Weed is derived from the cannabis plant and THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, among the many, many others present in the plant, is the predominantly psychoactive compound. Another popular compound in cannabis is cannabinol or CBD, which many people ingest to seek relief in a multitude of reported afflictions. THC and CBD can be smoked, vaporized, dissolved into edible food products, or even taken as a pill. And amongst the many known and reported effects of marijuana, one that is popular is hunger, the munchies, which therein hints at some sort of interaction with ghrelin. And ghrelin, as we know by now, although understood primarily as the hunger hormone, binds the ghrelin growth hormone secretagogue receptor that many of our talked about peptides interact with. So possibly there's something to dig into here. And I can't say there's a lot of data dissecting the role marijuana plays in growth hormone augmentation or its decrease, but I think there's quite a bit we can extrapolate. Actually, I think you're going to find the first study in particular a bit interesting. So this study, which came out of Romania and was published in 2022, evaluated the relationship between cannabinoids and the ghrelin growth hormone secretagogue receptor, and actually compared the binding properties of these weed-related compounds to those of these mimetics, like CJC-1295. So the study's purpose was to evaluate how well cannabinoids can be detected in the setting of other compounds that can compete with similar receptor binding sites. And if you're a pot smoker and take growth hormone augmenting peptides that interact through this binding site, which is likely the case, the findings in the paper are quite possibly pertinent. In this study, another compound called called substance P, inverse agonist peptide, was also compared, but we're going to hone in on the results regarding CJC-1295. And I'll try to simplify this, as the study is pretty technical and a bit boring of a read, but essentially receptors are very complex and have different binding sites whose binding or activation induces different formations structurally as well as physiologic consequences. But overall, the cannabinoids showed to induce binding of ghrelin to this ghrelin growth hormone secretagogue receptor while these mimetics like CJC acted like a competitive inhibitor to ghrelin itself, which pretty much means that the peptide fought for the same binding site, it competed. But the most interesting part is that cannabinoids, in particular CBD, appeared to more strongly induce binding of ghrelin to the receptor. This essentially means that with administration of CBD, ghrelin bound its receptor more efficaciously than it did with out. And so what's this mean? This means that since CBD induces this binding to the receptor, it's possible that CBD also would create a more favorable environment for CJC-1295 and other synthetic ghrelin mimetics that could bind to their site on the receptor too. So in summary, as the article interestingly concludes, in our opinion, the consumption of CBD should be strictly controlled, as it may significantly potentiate the action synthetic growth hormone secretagogue receptor agonists. Pretty cool, right? We'll finish this video off by recapping an old study that attempted to look at the endocrinologic effects of marijuana in particular. Because all those subtleties in receptor binding are important, there's more to the entire picture than that alone. And so the thought is that marijuana use decreases production of growth hormone as visualized in rodent models through increased production of somatostatin, its inhibitory compound. And as we discussed before, as we've gone through this growth hormone release hormone axis and its pictures like a billion times, increased production of somatostatin essentially equates to decreased release of growth hormone. So the overall picture here that we got from these studies referenced as they were the ones most pertinent to our conversation, the role of marijuana in 
and the setting of growth hormone augmenting peptide use is, of course, like everything else, a bit vague. However, there does seem to be some potential, but I'm wondering if the perceived positives and perceived negatives just balance out at this point. I think that although the study evaluated endocrinology in relation to cannabis, it's a bit old and non-reproduced, however, it appears quite possible marijuana consumption can increase somatostatin in rats, which would inhibit growth hormone release. Whether or not this is 100% translational has yet to be determined. That said, it appears that use of cannabinoids may potentiate compounds that bind to this ghrelin growth hormone secretagog receptor. So it doesn't seem impossible that long-term regular marijuana use would alter regulation of this growth hormone releasing hormone axis. And this is also possibly compounded by the fact that marijuana may also potentiate binding of these peptides to their targeted receptor site. And so, you know, as always, it's pretty difficult to assess, but interesting, thought-provoking conversation to have and things to think about nonetheless. So, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative, educational, maybe entertaining. Regardless, I hope you have a great day. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. Details for the Patreon if you want to support the channel further will be in the description below. Thanks and take care. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy.